Hello, it's Shari here today, and I am going to be showing you how I made this beautiful nighttime bayou scene with the swans and the magic iris dye. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut out the magic iris add-on panel and the little tab that goes on the handle from some white cardstock. I'm then going to fit the little tab where it goes. Now I've flipped the panel over, and I'm going to hold it in place with a little piece of washi tape on the back of the panel. This way it's in place as I do my ink blending and it will get the same ink blending treatment that the rest of the panel does. And it'll stay consistent. So I'm using Distress Oxides here with my foam blending tools. And I'm starting out with some shabby shutters for the bottom. And a lot of this is gonna get covered up by the water at the bottom. So I wanna make sure that I have it up high enough. So I wanna put it to where it hits that circle. And then at the top, I'm going to use faded jeans. So this is my darkest color. And you can see by holding that tab in place, it's going to get the same amount of ink as everything else. So it's going to look nice and consistent. Then between those two colors, I'm going in with peacock feathers. And once I put that in there, I'm just going to go back and forth between the colors to where the line between them blends nicely. That peacock feathers and that shabby shutters really do make a nice green when you blend them together there. And then I'll also blend it into the darker color at the top. And I'm trying to make a nighttime sky, but I still wanted it to be a little lighter at the bottom. So because this is a nighttime scene, I'm also going to use my gold metallic watercolors here. I'm going to get it nice and soupy, and I'm going to flick it all over the back for the effect of stars. And instead of really big pieces, or big drops rather, I want in some smaller ones. So I am just flicking it off the side of a clear block and that'll give you a lot smaller splatter than if you just tap it. You'll get a lot bigger splatter if you just tap it and let the droplets fall off the paintbrush. In addition to the gold, I'm also going to add in a little bit of the white just for some texture difference with the two colors there so it's not all just one. It gives it more depth the more things you add. So now I'm going to use the Bayou scene building stencils and I'm going to start with the vines. And I'm going to attach this to my background by putting a piece of tape on the back because this piece is smaller than the stencil. So the sticky side is up on these two pieces and then when I get my stencil in place I'll just stick it to that tape that's going to hold it from the back side. So I'm making sure that the tops of these vines are lined up with the top of my panel. And then I'm going to go in with Chip Sapphire, which is a darker blue. And I like to use the foam tools with my oxides. I think they work better than the blending brushes. But for these little vines, I was kind of having a hard time getting it nice and crisp in those little bitty openings. So you can see I'm kind of pouncing that foam. If that's all you have, it will work. It just takes a little more patience. But then I switched over to the brush and I used a small brush and this really got into those little small spaces of the vines much, much better. So you can see I'm just going all over, filling in those vines all the way to the top with that dark chip sapphire color. And I'm getting really good coverage and since these are oxides, it's going to lay over top of that other ink and you're going to see that color. Then for the tops of these, I'm going in with the black soot and I'm just doing some black along the top. So my vines are going to have some variation in their color. So I'm going to have black towards the top and that chip sapphire towards the bottom. And then my favorite part is when you pull off that stencil and you can see those beautiful vines that we created. So now I'm going to layer the leaves of the bayou stencils over the vines. And you can easily see how to line them up because it's etched into the stencil itself. And you can also use the grid lines. So I just kept those same two pieces of tape on the back and I'm going to line up the leaves and I'm just going to stick that down to those same two pieces of tape. Now for the leaves, I'm going to do two steps. The first is I'm going to put some color down. So you can see that Lucky Clover Distress Oxide there. That is what I'm going to use for the inking part. And I'm just going to use the same small brush that I cleaned off that I used for the vines. And I'm just going to put that color all over for the leaves. 
I'm going to be putting some glitter gel over top of this and I'm going to be using some clear glitter gel. You can always use a color and if you use a color you don't have to do this step but the cool thing about the clear glitter gel is that it'll pick up the color of the ink behind it. So I'm just wiping off most of the ink off of the stencil. I'm just using a very light touch with a slightly damp paper towel and then I'm going to use my clear glitter gel here and a little spatula and I'm going to spread that into the stencil. Now the cool thing like I said about this is you can kind of see the ink behind it. The other cool thing is if there's a little bit of ink left over on your stencil like I have because I didn't completely clean it off, you can see there that it's turning my glitter gel a little bit green. So you can actually tint it a little bit with your inks as well, which is kind of cool. Um, so it just gives it a different look. It's still kind of translucent, but has color. Whereas some colored glitters, you just get the color of the glitter. I think this would look really cool with some purple leaves or some teal leaves or even some gold. So I'm just making sure I have good coverage, scraping off all the excess. And I'm trying not to get too much glitter gel on there because it is picking up the ink color so it's not like what's on my little spatula here can be saved. I'm not going to put this back in the jar like I would if I wasn't doing it over ink because it's stained and I don't want to ruin my whole jar. So I'm just going to wipe that off. And then the super fun part is always pulling off that stencil. And look at those beautiful leaves. I love this so much. And then before it dries, I'm going to pop out the arrow that's in our little handle up there. And the reason I'm doing this now is because I don't want it to get kind of dried in there with the glitter gel. I don't want it to act as a glue to where I can't get this arrow out. And then I'm also going to go ahead and pull off the tab for the same reason. I don't want the gel that may go across the tab onto the background to kind of seal it there and it gets stuck. So I'm pulling these off before that glitter dries. And then I'm just gonna set all these aside to dry. Actually let it dry overnight. Now I'm gonna go ahead and work on the water here. So I've got a little strip of the Rainforest cardstock. I cut it with the bottom of that panel so it's got that nice stitching detail. And then I'm gonna use the middle size of the simple wavy borders. And this is going to be the water at the bottom of my seam. So I'm just going to center that up. And this is going to be a very thin strip at the bottom. And I'll just hold that in tape with in place with tape and run it through my die cut machine. And then to define the edge of the water a little bit, I'm going in with that same chip sapphire distress oxide and just inking the top of the water. I just think this looks really cool, especially for a nighttime scene because the water would be dark. And so I just think it gives it a little extra interest. So isn't that looking just great? So now I'm gonna work on what goes behind. So the idea behind this is that the opening is the moon. So I thought it would be great to use some watercolor wishes paper so it's got that lovely yellow, but it's got some texture to it, that watercolor texture. So I'm going to cut a circle that is bigger than the iris opening with a circle die. You can see that there. Then I'm also going to cut the little leaves or sausages that are part of the magic iris out of the same yellow. So it's going to look yellow whether it's open or closed. Now to cut the pieces of my magic iris, I've cut three of those rings and three of the little connector pieces. I've cut the connectors out of white because you're not going to see them and I've cut the rings out of some peacock cardstock because you may see the edges of it a little bit and I don't want it to stand out in contrast to my dark nighttime scene that I've created. Now I'm going to take my little flux capacitor piece and I'm going to cut it out of one of the rings. I'm going to line up the center with that center circle that's cut out of the ring just going to hold it in place with some tape and then this will give me my slots for my little pedal pieces here and also my guides for my connectors. So you're just going to stick the tab of those little pedal pieces into the slots and then slide them to where they line up with the edges. 
And then I decided I was going to hold these in place with some tape. I saw Jennifer McGuire do this in her video, and why I didn't think of this before is beyond me, but it'll hold them in place while you build your mechanism, and it'll keep them from kind of moving around. So I'm pretty picky about things, and I, I liked this method because it just kept them from moving. I didn't have to keep placing them in their proper place. So I'm just using some purple tape here just to hold them, and this will be really easy to pull off. And it only needs to stay there until I get the glue dots and then the ring on top of it on. So you can see, again, you put the little tab in the slot and then you turn it to where the outside and the inside line up with the outside and the inside of the ring. So it should line up perfectly. Now be sure to put this piece of tape away from that little X that it creates with the die because that's where the glue dot goes. So you want to use the mini size glue dots. These are the 3 16 size. Bigger ones don't work. Liquid glue doesn't work. These are the ones that you need for this to work correctly. And I'm just going to pick it up with my craft knife and I'm going to put one on each of those little X's that the die creates on the end of these little petal pieces. So now that those glue dots are in place, right where they need to be, right where X marks the spot, you can take another one of the rings, the solid rings that we cut, and we're just going to line it up, lay it on top, and stick it down to those three glue dots. Those are the only places that this ring is going to be stuck down. Now I can pull off the tape because it has served its function of keeping them in place. It doesn't need to be there anymore. So now I can start to put my connectors on and I'm just drawing a pencil line so you can see where the adhesive goes. So you use those little guides that it cuts the little stitching lines and you go from the stitching line straight out to the outside of the ring. I happen to have picked up a little piece of scrap paper, that's what I was pulling off there. And you want to do all three. So from that center straight out to the ring, I got a little bit of adhesive on my little petal piece there that I will get off with an adhesive remover because you don't want any of that on there. It'll keep it from moving. And then you want to take those little connector pieces and you want to line up that slight curve that's at the end with the inside of the circle and you want to put it right between those little guide marks that it creates. So you put all three on. Then you can take the little tabs and fold them over so that they're out of the way when the mechanism is open. You don't want to glue these down, just fold them in so they're out of the way. You don't want to glue them down because they won't move. Then you can take the little handle piece that goes to the right. I wrote it on my die so I always remember. It goes to the right of one of the connectors. So you're going to put adhesive just on the bottom half of it that's going to hit the ring. And you're going to take that curved inside edge, line it up with the ring, and then you're going to create a V at the bottom, right at the right edge of that connector. So the curve matches up and then a little V down at the bottom. Now you can lay that third ring on top. And we're going to fold over our connector pieces. So you want to put adhesive on those and you want to gently fold them over so that they are not too tight. If it's too tight, it won't move. So I'm just putting some adhesive on each of them and I'm just going to gently fold them over and wrapping around that ring. It will not go all the way to the inside of the ring like it did when we put them on initially on the other side and that's okay. If you do go all the way to the edge, you probably have it too tight. So you just want to gently fold it over and it will actually be on the outside of that stitching pretty much. Now you can test it and see how well your mechanism works. So here's my little tab that we pull, we layer onto that little tab there and it does have some white left over from when I had it taped into the opening. And I'm just going in with that faded jeans, which is what I use on the background, and I'm just covering that white because when you pull it, you're probably going to see a little bit of this. And I just wanted to 
take the time and finish it off so that that little detail is taken care of. So I'm just going in with a very small brush and just doing those two little corners. So now I can adhere this to my little pull tab. So I'm just using some liquid glue and since I cut my pull tab out of black, my arrow is gonna be black. You're gonna see that through there. So the way you wanna do this is you wanna line up that slight curve of the bottom of it with the curve of the ring. And you can see a little bit of black's left over, you're gonna trim that right off. So now I can start some assembly. So I'm putting some foam tape on the bottom of the water I created earlier that has a little inking at the top. And now that my background has dried overnight, I can stick this down. You wanna make sure that ink is dry. This foam tape does not stick when it's not. Now I'm gonna work on the images for my card. I've got some stamps from Swan Soiree on my Misty here, and I'm just inking them up with some jet black ink because I'm gonna color them with Copic markers. So you want a Copic friendly ink. And I'm gonna start out by coloring my grass here with a light green as my first color. And then I'm gonna go a little darker. And then in the end, I actually pulled in a dark teal blue color. And I thought that it looked really cool because we're making a nighttime scene. So these aren't gonna be brightly colored as if they were out in the sun. And I think that this dark teal really helped. I'm coloring the flower, the lotus flower, really simply with just two pink colors. And I'll blend it out a little bit with that lighter color. I started with lighter, went darker, a little bit lighter. This is a small image, so not too much shading going on. Then for the lily pad, I did sort of the same thing I did for the grass. I went in with a brighter green, and then I went in with that dark teal blue color in the center and sort of blended it out a little bit. And I wanted the cattails to be a little different than brown. I wanted it to go with this kind of magical night scene I have here. So I'm using some purples. And I, I really like making these purple. I, I made purple ones in another project I did. And I just think they're so much more fun in non-traditional colors. So I'm going in with some purples. I'm going to darken them up. And then for my swans... I'm using some cool grays. So you can see there, I've already colored the one swan and I colored it in the same way I'm coloring this one. I'm starting with my darkest gray and I'm just doing some very light lines where the shadows would be. I'm gonna go in with that C3 and sort of blend them out and create a little more shadow. And then I'll go in with that C1 Pull that color some more. So I'm not making these white. These are definitely going to have a gray colored throughout. Um, usually with white, I'll take a gray and kind of blend it out to the white, but this is a nighttime scene, so it's kind of dark. So you can see I'm going in with that C1, and I've colored almost all of it, and then I'm going to go in with that C00 and blend that out, but I'm going to color in the rest of that swan that hasn't been colored. So it has that darker gray tone to the whole swan. And I really think that helps make it look like it's nighttime. So now I'm going to give them a little more color and I just thought it's nighttime magical bayou. There's this purple glow somewhere probably. So I'm going in with the BV triple zero and I'm adding a little bit of this kind of blue violet shading to them. And I'm kind of going where my shadows are and it's just giving them a nice kind of magical color, I think. Just a little more to it than just a gray. Just a little color to it. It's very subtle and it's actually a little hard to see on here, but it's very pretty. And then finally I went in with a YR triple zero, a very pale yellow. And I'm putting some highlights on their heads and the tops of their wings as if the moon was hitting them and they were kind of glowing from the moon. So they've got some moon glow happening here. I used a dark orange for their beaks because, again, it's nighttime. And then I added a little rosy cheek to the one girl swan 
And then I also added a little bit of teal like some eyeshadow. It's very small. I use my coordinating dies to cut out all my images. And I'm just going to put them in this little bowl until I get to assemble them. This has kept me from losing pieces on my desk a lot lately. So I'm going to put my magic iris that we made earlier onto the background panel. So I'm just putting my adhesive all around the ring. Then I can use the tab to line it up. You want to make sure it's in the closed position when you do this. So I'm just lining up my tab in that little notch. And you can see since I took the effort to put that tab in there, it looks complete with the scene. The vines go up onto that tab. And then the only thing that really makes it stand out is the black arrow. So I'm gonna open this up so I've got my circle there. I'm gonna lay it on a Blue Jay note card and I'm going to trace the circle just as a guide. I'm tracing my circle so I know where to put the moon, which is that piece that I cut earlier. It's bigger than the circle. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some of my pieces on the front panel. So I'm putting the swans on and I put a piece of foam adhesive towards the top where it's going to hit the background and a little bit of liquid adhesive on the bottom where it hits the water. And I'm just going to put these on both sides with their heads overlapping where my moon is. I'm also going to add some glittery accents to my lotus flower and my cattails here using a Lawn Fawn glitter pen just because you can't have enough shimmer in this beautiful nighttime scene. I'm putting the lotus flower on with a little bit of foam adhesive on top and then I'm going to use liquid adhesive and tuck my cattails behind the water. So now to put my moon down, and this is the reason why I cut it bigger than the circle, so I don't have to be perfect. That circle on my background is just a guide. You could also cut the circle of the rings and drop it in, but I actually didn't want that stitching detail on it. I want it to look like a moon without stitching. <laughs> um, so that's why I chose to do it this way. You could do it however you want. And then I'm gonna put foam adhesive on this panel, and I'm opening that mechanism to make sure I don't put it in the way where that mechanism moves. So mostly it's just gonna be along the edges. So that top, you need that top open for the mechanism to move. And then I'm gonna put a couple little pieces down in these corners. So you only wanna put adhesive on the magic iris where those connector pieces are. On here, it's easy to see because they're white but those are the only places that you want to put adhesive on that actual mechanism. So now I can layer it on top and center it in my card. To finish it off, I've opened up the mechanism and I'm using some liquid glue to put down a die cut heart. Sorry for my head. I'm going to put it a little bit towards the top so it's between and space really well with the two swans there. And then I am covering it in glitter with the glitter pin. So I'm just coloring it all over and giving it a nice layer of glitter just for some shine. So when the moon kind of opens up, you get the heart between the two swans. I just think this is super cute. I love the background. It turned out exactly like it was in my head, which... I'm always so happy when it does that. Um, I love the glitter leaves. It's just so pretty. And I love the moon. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.